Hi, and welcome to Sisters for Financial Independence. My name is Catherine Agupjan, and here at Sisters for Fi, we help you manage your money better so you can live a life of impact today and tomorrow. In this video, we are going to talk about the 529 plan, a very popular plan to help you save and invest for your kids' education expenses. Let's dive into the, what the 529 plan is. The 529 plan allows you to invest money for future education related expenses. The accounts provide tax benefits as long as the withdrawals are used for qualified expenses. The IRS has a list of those qualified expenses and it's good to check that list every so often as it does change. Let's look at how the 529 plan work. First, you would deposit post-tax money into a 529 plan. This is money that's already been taxed. You invest it in a mutual fund or a target college fund and you let it grow. At the time when your child is about to head to school and you perhaps you get the first bill for the first semester, you would draw the money for education related expenses at that point. One thing to note about the 529 plan is that you can actually withdraw the money at any time as long as it's used to pay for qualified expenses. There are no taxes paid on the investment growth, so this is where the tax advantage lies. And another advantage is that you can hold on to the account for as long as you need, especially or in the case if your child goes through an advanced degree or say they receive a scholarship and don't need it for undergrad, you can hold on to it until they are ready to pursue a graduate degree. Another option is to transfer it to another child when ready. What can it pay for? The big things it can pay for is tuition, room and board, books, supplies, computer, and software. Again, there is a list over on irs.gov, and I would recommend just pulling it up maybe one or two years and on the year that your child is about to head to school so you know exactly when and why you need to pull it and for what specific expense. There's a ton of benefits with a 529 plan. The big thing is the tax benefits. You basically get tax-free growth on your earnings, on your investment. So if you decide or if you choose to fund this account early on, maybe when the baby is born, there's really a potential to grow money and have that money available for use when ready. It's also easy to transfer if at some point your child does not need the money because of a scholarship or does not end up using all of it, you can transfer it to another family member, a second child, um, or even back to yourself if you end up wanting to go back to school. It's also easy to maintain with the advent, advent of really online financial banking and investing. You can just log on and figure out how your investments are doing and you have full control as the account owner. So yes, that means that you could update and change the beneficiary should something need to change. It is also gift and tax friendly in that you can put in up to $15,000 into the account as a gift without incurring a tax. And the 529 plan have a very high contribution limit and there is no income limit requirement. So if you and your family makes a good amount of money, there's still a lot of advantages to putting money into the 529 plan. Some disadvantages of the 529 plan is that it must be used for education. So again, you'll need to look for the qualified education expenses. There are some management fees that will eat up some of your investments and earnings. So you want to make sure you're investing in the right type of investments um, that have low fees. Some 529 plans, depending on which one you sign up, have limited investment options. And of course, ownership rules, like I mentioned, because you as a beneficiary, you as the account owner can change the beneficiary um, if someone that 
else's own an account for your child, they could change the beneficiary without letting you know. And it's also important to know that the 529 plan can be used for really almost any type of education. It's really not only for kids too. So it, you can use it as an adult if you head back to school for retraining. It's not only for college as well. You can use $10,000 towards K through 12 tuition per calendar year. You can also use it for school or vocational school. If your child ends up not wanting to go to a four year traditional college and or wants to pursue a vocational, then they can use that money towards. And of course, you, you don't lose any unused money. You can of course transfer it to someone else or you can withdraw it for yourself and you pay the penalty on it. Now, it's important to understand how all of these accounts impact financial aid. Certain assets that you hold and that your children hold will impact the FAFSA, which is the free application for financial aid for students and understanding how this particular asset counts towards the FAFSA will help you understand what kind of family contributions you will need to put in towards college. For the FAFSA, it does count as a parent's asset, but it only reduces the aid package by a maximum value of 5.64% of the asset's value. So it doesn't have that much impact, but it does have impact. Within the 529 plan, there is an option to also invest in a target college fund. These work very similarly to the retirement target date funds. And basically you select a date fund that corresponds to the year that your child would be going to college, say the year that they will turn 18. And the target date fund is set so that earlier on, the fund is invested in more aggressive equities and stocks. So the stock, the fund grows faster and has higher risk and volatility early on. And as the date comes closer to when you will need the money, when the child is closer to 18, the target date fund will shift its allocation to more stable investments like bonds. So that by the time you are ready to withdraw from the 529 plan, you have cash on hand to do so. Despite the simplicity of the target date funds, it's still good to check your portfolio for the 529 because some of these target date funds do lean a little bit more conservative and you might want to be a little bit more aggressive early on so you can take advantage of the stock market growth and have enough funds for when your child is ready to go to school. How do you know which 529 plan to invest in. One thing you can do is search for the Morningstar 529 rating and they normally update this every year. So if next year you're ready to invest in the 529 plan, look for 529 ratings for Morningstar for 2022, but here is 2021. And Morningstar normally reviews their the 529 plans have based on the investments inside it, the process for what investments they put into it, um, the options, the fees, and some of the oversight from the investment manager. And they rate their funds across three ratings. One is gold, silver, and bronze. And here you will see the gold rated 529 plans. You have Illinois, Michigan, and Utah. And if you scroll further down, you'll find the silver as well as the bronze. Now you don't need to live within these states to take advantage of that particular 529 plan. If your state does provide a state tax deduction for you, if you use your state's 529 plan, it might be more beneficial for you to do that, 
but you'll want to analyze to see if it's worth doing that as some state plans are not necessarily the best and may cost you more in fees. So you have to weigh if the tax deduction is worth uh, the returns or the fees you might get with the 529 plan. And once you know which plan you are ready to use, you can head to the plan's website to sign up and automate your process for investing into the 529 plan for your child. A big thing that I also love about the 529 plan is that depending on the platform you use to invest, they also provide you the ability to create a unique gifting dashboard so you can ask family and friends to help you save for your kids future and they can contribute to the 529 plan. It takes a village to raise a child and getting family and friends to contribute even if it's just a little bit amount can add up over time. In the description box, I am also including a link to a script that you can send to family and friends to ask for contributions to a 529 plan. It's a little unconventional, but I think in this day and time, it's time we ask for things that we want and need for the future instead of perhaps getting some things that we only use for a short period of time. Contributing to a 529 plan can provide so many benefits for children down the line. A big thing is that it provides them more options when it comes to school and it can also help really eliminate the student loan debt that they might have to incur in the future. If this video has been helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like and subscribe to Sisters for Fi and let me know in the comments if you have plans or have already opened a 529 account for your kids and are already contributing to it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments as well. And of course, check the description box for important links associated with this video.